Hello guys, welcome back to another video and um, today is my top 5 surprise moments in football this week um, Guys, you know what to do by now If you enjoy this video, give yeah, a big crap for more Subscribe for more and let's go My number 5 I've gone with Rome beating Chelsea in Rome um, I think in the first tie between these two clubs it was 6 now Chelsea you could correct me put it down in the comments below um, some schoolboy defending by Chelsea I wouldn't even call it schoolboy if I'm honest um, it was I'll, I'll watch the game back and it's a uh, I'm not sure what to call it. Um, I don't even see that sort of defending a schoolboy uh, game. Especially when I think Wayne got their third goal, I think it was when um, you uh, got the three centre backs in a line, sort of like that. Um, and then they crossed the ball over. And then I think I made it 3 0. Um, quite surprised by how Chelsea played in that game. Oh, excuse me. Um, so that's why it's in my top 5 this week. Number 4, I've gone with Bournemouth beating Newcastle. Now I've seen the Dwight Gale goal over and over again. Um, probably about three or four times I've seen it. Um, I think the linesman did get the, the decision wrong. Um, obviously that went against you, but um, I do. I will give the linesman the benefit of the doubt this time because it does happen in football. You know it's. I say to my dad, I need a uh, video referee in now. It's too quick for the the um, the eyes of the linesman and the ref and every every fourth official now. Uh, video referee is definitely needed. I think that Dwight Gale decision um, proof or point. So that's why it's in my top five this week, purely because a mini mistake. Um, but I think it's now time for the video refereeing if it wants to keep up the speed of the game. Number three, I have got. I know, yeah, Steve Cook got the header to get Bournemouth to three points. Um so that's my number four covered. My number three is Tottenham beating Real Madrid 3 1. Um now yet again I'll probably bring this up week after week but I'll say it again. Millions of pounds that um Real Madrid have got on that pitch. It don't mean a lot now. Um, well played Tottenham. Uh, you surprised me as well. Um, but to uh, go a bit round Madrid three one. I think you. I think you are going to be a team to beat in a few years time. Excuse me. Um, so, yeah, well done to you, Tottenham. Um, and now on to my number two. My number two is a change of referees in the Stoke and Leicester game. Now, s 
The referee had a hamstring problem. That's what I know anyway. But what I'm surprised about this week with the change of ref is how long it took the ref to swap over. Now we're having a bit of a chin wag um talking and but River Ref you there to set 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 an example to the players um and to the fans and look this is what you should do. The the fourth official weren't even ready to come on. I think he should have been. Um and I think it took about four or five minutes for the fourth official to get ready to referee and vice versa. But you know, you should be ready ready and waiting, kit underneath, full boots, everything so if you're ready if you need it. Um that's why it's put my number that's why it's took my number two spot this week. Just the time it took to do that, so um at number one is Dunk not being called up for England. Now us, a lot of you probably say, well, you're a Brighton fan. Um, you could, you will say that. But to be honest, I think Towns had to serve the shot in there as well. Um, With Town said okay, he does play for Crystal Palace now, but he's still good down them wings. And instead of that, we call Oxfam Chamberlain up, who not sat, uh, sits on the bench a lot of the time, and he starts for England. And another thing I'd do is take Joe Hart out of goal and put Jack Butler in there, start looking towards the future instead of the past is um you know well done to the under 17s on your uh world cup win as well um you know if it was me going into the next world cup i would take some of the under 20s and some of the under 17s or under 19s you know this men's squad it's it is, um, it is looking a bit, um, you know, the men's go out there and they don't look as good as they do for their clubs now, whether that's uh, overplaying or somewhere across there, I don't know. But if I was the England manager, I'd start investing into the future now. So in about 10 years' time, the team be ready. It's their plan. I mean, we've got two friendies coming up, and we've got Cahill, who's an England senior anyway. King. And we've called up our senior players for two friendlies. Now, I know I need to practice. But, and then, the last international break, we're qualified for the World Cup and we're planning to we're playing the young kids but why not play them in a major game where they're going to be in the future you know football is uh, you've got to get ready otherwise time, time comes in time for them to play Brazil and that they're not going to be ready or nothing like that um, so my thing for England is invest into a future now, a bit like Wales did. Um, you know the competition a couple of years back, we got our tag against Arsenal. Wales reached the semi-finals. Um, so that's it. To me, it says it all. But you know. But anyway, guys, that's my top five for this week. If you enjoyed this video, a big fat thumbs up subscribe for more, thanks for watching and ciao for now.